And uh, the, about the 20th, well, actually, the, I was inducted. Uncle Sam <laughs> called me. Uh, well, but anyhow, I registered. I had I registered for the army when I turned 21. I had to go register for the army when I turned 21. There in in March of 42, and uh, so. Uh, but anyhow, she and I got married the 26th of September, and uh, the uh, about less than three months later, Uncle Sam called me for the for the service, and all. And uh, uh, I there in Georgia, I, Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, where I was inducted into the army. And I got on the train there. They put me on the train there, but between Christmas and New Year's of uh, 42, and I pulled out. And then two days and nights later, I landed in uh, Camp Phillips, Kansas, up at Salina, Kansas. And uh, it was a pretty day like today, but not warm like it is now there. But it was a pretty nice, sunshiny day when I left Georgia. And I uh, uh, stepped off in snow up there at Camp Phillips, Kansas. <laughs> In snow about a foot deep, you know, you know. And I, I spent the winter there, and, and went through basic training. Went through basic training there. The, uh, some people call it boot camp, but it's basic training. Then I got to go home for ten days. And then uh, 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 that was in the spring. Then uh, in July, my oldest, uh, our oldest daughter was born in July, the 18th of July, I think that July. And I was in Kansas, and she, they were in, my wife's in Georgia, and she was, and uh, the uh, daughter was three months old before I ever got to see her. Mm -hmm. I, and when I got to see her, I went to Tennessee Maneuvers, and that's down there by, close to where my, where they lived, you know. And so one day my, my platoon leader and I was in Chattanooga, Tennessee. He had me to drive him in for some reason, and we were there. And he asked me, said, Jack said, where does your folks live here from here? And I said, sir, they live over here in Georgia about 40 miles. And he said, well, that's why don't we run over there and see, see what they, how they're doing. Well, that's when I got to go see uh, Ona and see my three months old baby the first time was, uh, when we made it. Went in. So I went, uh, got to go and I got to visit with Ona and, and uh, the baby and what have you, and he visited with my parents. And all, and we went back and, and, and all, and, that's, and when I, that's when I got to see her the first time. So uh, uh, I uh, uh, went, to, but anyhow, I, 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 after that, we, when we got through Tennessee Maneuvers, we, we was, uh, it was close to Thanksgiving, and so uh, he, uh, the lieutenant asked me, they wanted some cider, apple cider for the Thanksgiving meal. And he said, Jack said, Pat, call me Pat, said, Pat, reckon you could find us some cider in uh, Chattanooga for the meal for Thanksgiving? And I said, probably could, sir. I could sure try. And, and he said, well, in the morning, you check out a Jeep and get somebody to go with you and uh, go see if you can find us some cider for Thanksgiving. Okay, I did the next morning, got Corporal Sheets to go with me. And we headed to Chattanooga and found the cider and got, uh, made plans to pick it up that afternoon. Well, I took off to see my folks in that Jeep. I dropped him off in Dalton, Georgia, there with his girlfriends. And I took off to my home with that Jeep. And I rode my family and my dad and different parts of my family around over there. And that was something different. There's no boy going home in a Jeep and riding his <laughs> family. But I got those brakes like that. But I, and, and, and I was really tickled to do that. And we came back and, and uh, then we moved to Camp McCain, Mississippi. After that, and uh, uh, so uh, I, uh, th this is unheard of. I'm going to tell the older, older people would understand it more than maybe you children, but the Army uh, was strict about everything. But anyhow, uh, there was uh, uh, training in Mississippi. We, we went on a week's training up towards Memphis, Tennessee there, and the, the platoon that done the best, would get to a weekend pass to go home when we got back to camp, you know. We was up there around Holly Springs doing this uh, training up there, you know. And of course, uh, my troop, my platoon did the best because uh, it was, uh, you'd take a, a compass and shoot an azimuth and you'd mark on those azimuths and, and through the woods, across the rivers and everything, day and night, you know, and you'd come to these places and there'd be other soldiers there defending them and you'd have to find, take it. Uh, that was 
uh, training, making believe, you know, and what have you. But anyhow, it get, makes a long story short, my, my platoon done the best. And so when we got back to camp on Thursday, uh, they started giving out weekend passes for my platoon on Friday. Well, me and a boy from close to Chattanooga, down to Tennessee, we wanted to get an extra day to uh, see if we could uh, uh, could go home, you know, see our folks and make it back. But and all, we stayed around there that Friday till late. We couldn't find an officer to get. We decided we'd go anyhow, go <laughs> home anyhow. So, but, so we took off home. Okay. Uh, uh, we, when we got uh, yeah, got home, he made it back for Reverly Monday morning, but I didn't. I was two days late. I didn't get back till Wednesday morning. Well, I was PFC, Private First Class. That was my rank. And I told Ona and my mother and dad and the folks, I said, now the next letter you get from me will be private because they'll burst me back to a private and I get uh, a lot of... Uh, KP duty and all that stuff, and maybe take some of my money and whatever, you know, but being over the hill for a couple of days. Okay, I got back on Wednesday morning for Reveille, you know, and all, and, uh, and Thursday the captain sent for me to come in and see him. So I went in and reported to go I had to go through the first sergeant's office to get to him. Okay, Pat said the, the captain was seeing you. I went in there in front of his desk, and he was sitting there behind it, and I come to teach and saluted it. And he returned my salute and said, be at ease, Pat. And I was at ease. And, and he looked up and said, Pat, said, what, how, what happened? Said, they could have told me that any other man in this outfit had been over the hill two days like this, and I could have believed it, but not you. And, uh, and then I started uh, uh, telling him this story, that actually lying to him. <laughs> telling him about, you know, I got down there, sir, and and got to, uh, my, some of my old friends, you know, got, they got to, we got to celebrating, but they got wanted to celebrate because Jack was going to win that war for them, so let's, let's celebrate. And all, and, and uh, I told him we got to drinking that moonshine whiskey and, and celebrating, you know, and I, but, but, and, but uh, see, that, that's when I was fibbing to him, you know. Some people called it lying to him, but I called it fibbing to him. <laughs> But anyhow, uh, uh, I, I, we got to celebrating because Jack was going to get win that war for him. And I said, sir, about two days later, I woke up to the fact that I was waking wake from my outfit. And uh, I was, uh, uh, started making it back just as fast as I could, you know. So he visited with me a little more and dismissed me. I come out through the first sergeant's office there and he's sitting there with his notebook in his hand to put down all the punishment that the captain gave me. He said, okay, what did he give you? And, and I was serious about this. I, I thought he'd tell the sergeant how to punish me. I said, well, he didn't tell me, but I bet it'd be a plenty. And those sergeant just wielded. He said, well, if he didn't tell you anything, he's not giving you anything. Okay, now, kids, this was on Thursday when I reported to the captain. And uh, on Friday... <coughs> The, the ratings the ratings was posted on the bulletin board and my name was up for corporal. Instead of getting bur bursted back to private, my name was up for corporal. <laughs> and this this buddy, a good friend of mine uh, from Knoxville, Tennessee, he had went over the hill like that, was gone a few days over the hill, uh, AWOL for, uh, uh, on Tennessee maneuvers, and they threw the book about, at him. And... Uh, he, he was telling me when I got back, said, Pat said, I feel sorry for you. He said, they're going to really punish you. He said, I know they've already done it to me and all. And, but when he went out there and seen my name up for corporal, that boy come back and he was upset. He, he <laughs> hot cursed at me there for 30 minutes. Said, if you'd have stayed over the hill a week, they'd have made you general. <laughs> but anyhow, that, that, that happened and it, it, I, I doubt if it happened like that to any other uh, soldiers in that man's army, but the reason why I think it happened, I had been a good top soldier in Kansas, all the training, and then Mississippi there in Tennessee maneuvers. I'd been been a top soldier and all, and they they they, they uh, I appreciated it anyhow. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, from me growing up like that, because they mean too much. Just thinking about that, that 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 that's the reason I guess I can remember them so bad because they mean so much to me, you know, and all. And, uh, and you had a happy life. Didn't I've you? had, I've, I've had to work hard, but I've had a good life. But I've, I've been blessed, you know, in every way. I've been, 
and all, and so I've had a good, really had a good life, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and pretty healthy life too, you know, mm -hmm. and all, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, go right ahead. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, while we while I was there in Mississippi before we left to, uh, later in the year to go to to the war, uh, Ona, my wife, and little daughter uh, got to come to Mississippi and spend some time with me because after I after I made corporal, uh, I was allowed to live off the base, and I got, and uh, my my Ona and I and, and two other couples uh, shared this sh shared this one house. We shared the kitchen, and each one, each couple had a bedroom. I had a bedroom, and we, and uh, I remember that uh, c coming to, after training, dear, they didn't come into back to town that to where we was owning the baby and was there that evening. She was, she was ten months old then, and uh, I remember her running to the door, and when I'd show up, run the door, hollering, "Daddy," you know, that <laughs> little girl, you know. But actually, we after the while, uh, they had to leave and go back home because we were shipping out. And going to uh, go ahead and ship out to go overseas, and we uh, uh, left there, came to Mississippi, and went to uh, uh, New York, the port of embarkation at Camp Shanks, New York, to, to sail overseas. Well, we were there about in Camp Shanks, New York, about uh, oh about a week, I guess, getting ready to ship out, and I got an overnight pass to go into New York City. Now we're talking about an old mountain kid boy that grew up there in the mountains and all, and uh, and I got a pass to go into New York City and got went in there and got on the subway, you know, and rode in there. And I, I got off the subway and walked up to the streets, you know, and there's those, those old, all of those tall buildings. Man alive. Don't you know that caught my eye? And I never seen anything like that before. And all, but anyhow, I I, uh, I visited I spent the whole night there just to going to different places during the night, you know. And I went to Jack Dempsey's restaurant. My old namesake, and uh, and, and I and uh, uh, he came out on the stage. Or I didn't get to visit with him anything, but he got he came out on the stage, and I got to see him there, you know, and all. So we uh, 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 then uh, then uh, then we uh, uh, sh got on this ship and shipped out there. That I've got the picture of it over there. That there's 22,000 of us aboard that ship. You do you know what, kids? That's twice, more than twice as many people as there in Parma County that was on that one ship. This was a, the, one of England's, the, they, England had two big luxury ships like that, the Queen Elizabeth and the Queen Mary, and they turned them into troop carriers. And uh, they, every room on that ship had uh, cots stacked on top of each other, and, and you had little aisles to walk through and all, and uh, the, you'd... Uh, if you was on the top bunk, you had to climb up there and, and spend the night on that in that top bunk. You know, and every room was like that. They had it had to be like that for 22,000 of us to be aboard that ship. Well, we went across without an escort. You know what an escort is? Is is battleships and things escorting you across to keep uh, tornadoes and I mean torpedoes and all from uh, getting you, getting you and what have you. But we went across without an escort. But that ship, uh, we zigzagged. They said it took about 10 minutes for a t t torpedo to get lined up on the ship, and we zigzagged about every seven or eight minutes to keep going across there. And we went across in five days and nights. And we went across there in five days and nights. We, uh, we anchored out and we landed at Scotland, uh, pulled into the bay there in Scotland, and uh, dropped anchor there, and they moved us to shore on uh, smaller vessels. And all right, and we we marched and went to a train to to go into England from Scotland into England on a train, and uh, these uh, Scottish uh, playing those bagpipes is that what? But there was those short skirts on. Now that that was something different for this old mountain boy to see though. <laughs> those people there, the men there with those guys there, with those little short skirts on to playing the, those things and all. That was different. We went into. Uh, England on a train then, and we was there for a while before we shipped across to the to the channel at the end of the war. And I, if you'd like to, we could get over there and and. Uh, uh